Brian Perriott, Manager and Senior Analyst with Canfax, joins us here on the Real Agriculture. We're at the Canadian Beef Industry Conference in Calgary, and Brian heading into uh, into fall here. Uh, volatility, talking about in your presentation here, volatility seems to be the the norm. Uh, compared to what we maybe saw in the past in the, in the cattle business here in Western Canada? Yeah, it just continues to be huge price swings. You know, we thought we went through big ones in 2014, 15, and then the big down in 16, where we were seeing cattle values fed, you know, move $700 a year from high to low, and we thought, well, maybe we'll get a little bit of stability here. And, you know, it's been another repeat where we've done that again this year. Uh, we got a really, you know, a very strong spring rally, which was good, but we've... As, you know, seen the summer sell off again, where we've seen uh, big declines, and yeah, volatility is kind of the new normal here. Uh. So, is this largely due to U.S. market drivers, or, or why? Are, why is this happening? Combination of things. You know, the mar U.S. market performed well. Exports for, uh, have changed a lot. You got to throw in the currency market. Both the U.S. currency has an impact on their trade. Uh, has an impact on our dollar. Uh, we've seen our dollar rally quite a bit here. It's uh, it takes some of the prices or puts a bit more price pressure on our prices and uh, that adds to the volatility and then there's basis things you know uh, we've seen our cattle prices be quite competitive to the US where we've seen we've been at a premium to the US at times so you know they can have a strong market and then if we go premium and then as we come down we're going to a discount and all that just stretches how much volatility we're seeing. Are we at the, the top of the range for the dollar or have we seen well, uh, yeah, I my feeling when I look at some of those charts at 80 cents is pretty strong resistance, uh, and I'm thinking along the lines. Uh, I know Doug spoke here today, and similar feeling that we've probably got a lot of the positivity priced into the dollar. And in my mind, from a market perspective and price perspective, hopefully we stay under 80 cents and maybe even fall back here a little bit more. A couple cents would uh, would help the calf market going into the fall run. Okay. What have we seen for domestic demand in terms of packing? demand and, and capacity. Yeah, we've, we've been doing well. Like I said, our basis levels have been strong, which means, you know, our packers are competing and paying up very well for Canadian cattle. Even where our cow prices have been premium to the U.S. for quite some time. Uh, fed cattle, you know, hanging in a, a stronger than normal range. And, you know, our packers are, we're, we're we have, our herd hasn't grown, but we are slaughtering a lot of cattle. Uh, you know, a couple weeks, we had our biggest kill in seven years. Western Canada killed over 53,000 head and uh, you know that's big production, and it's it's good to have the the cattle around, the packers working uh, at full speed. Uh, certainly bodes well for their business. And you know the other news with Harmony Beef having a, a new packing plant open in Canada here this year's, you know uh, it's very positive for the industry. Yeah, always positive to have more to use that have more capacity and to use it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, feed costs, that's something that's on producers' minds or on feeders' minds, obviously. Yeah considering the, the dryness that we've seen. Yeah, weather concerns and feed costs kind of go hand in hand. So far, we haven't seen much. She's given a, there's a lot of areas that are dry and very dry, yet, uh, you know, they've come into the year in good condition. Grass, you know, carryover, stockpile grass, good subsoil moisture. So we haven't seen a real flush or panic or a big drought-induced selling of cattle, which has been good. Uh, but it has impacted feed costs for sure. We've seen barley prices pick up. Uh, barley production is going to be down. Uh, last year, it's going to be a bit of a switch last year. And part of the reason we have all these extra cattle around in Canada is, you know, we had a feeding advantage last year. We kept the cattle here. We had lots of feed wheat, lots of feed barley. This fall, not looking so much like that. You know, not only does feed costs will probably, you know, hurts calf prices and feed prices, but we could see cattle move south and. I think it's a little tougher for the feedlot industry to compete that way too. Uh, but yeah, I, I think definitely feed costs higher than a year. Especially when you look at what corn prices are in Iowa or yeah. in, in the Midwest. Yeah. They had a bit of a, you know, they did see a little bit of a spike in prices on weather concerns, but most reports down that I'm reading out of the U.S. is they still got a pretty good corn crop. So yeah, that's, I think they're, we're going to, or we're losing our feed cost advantage we had last year. Okay. So overall, I know, it's, I think we probably ask you this every time we talk to you, uh, the state of the Canadian herd in terms of numbers and expansion, and I know it's been years that we've been talking about this. Yeah. Just finally, Brian, where, where are things at in terms of incentives to grow the herd or, or not seeing those incentives? And yeah, those well, it's it's almost, yeah, I've been, I've been here at Canfax for seven yeah. years, <laughs> and I've been reporting that our, flat, our herd is kind of flat. You know, we were, it's had ended the decline in about 2010, and but we've still, our cattle herd's been very flat. We've lost a few 
still shrunk a few cows. But the last couple of years have been, have been basically flat. And most signals today, you know, the incentive, there's profitability in the cow-calf sector. They had huge years in 2014, 15, uh, 16 was so-so. And then, but we're still looking at a decent profitability in the cow-calf sector, but not seeing expansion. It's not enough incentive at this point uh, um, to grow the herd. Uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit, di it's profitable, but you know, they look back two years ago at $3 calves and $2 calves, and this is exciting. And a lot of it just comes down to, you know, on the grain side and land competition and technology and seeding equipment and pulse crops and different kinds of crops that just compete for land and we're not seeing, uh, you know, the momentum on the beef side pick up. Like I say, yeah. profitability incentives are there, but the competitive incentives are, are still struggling with, against the grain sector, you know, workload and everything else. Demographics. Yeah, yeah. So. That's the thing. I, I'm not sure what it what it would take. You know, it'd be nice. We're boy, 3.8 million. It'd be nice to get back over 4 million beef cows. Uh, and if you look at the big picture of the cycle today, you know, we are we're there's a, we know we're gonna have more North American cattle and beef come down the pipeline for the next two to three years. So, you know, that probably has some guys a little hesitant to jump in right now. But um, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, with the export and the big the big growth potential continues to be export demand. And we saw that this spring exports help surge the market and we can grow more beef here and we can definitely market it and you know we still see the sectors making money um, but it's it's still a producer's decision if they want to want to get into cattle and, and grow that herd. I should ask you one other question we have the NAFTA negotiations yeah. underway yeah do you think there's a, a risk there at all to the cattle market or, or are you confident that that is going to at least for cattle not be worse than status quo. Yeah, there, there's always a risk there. There's so much uncertainty. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. Doug was saying that you know that they may have some bigger revamp uh, uh, sort of targets than maybe we're thinking right now. Uh, again, that's a lot of the policy side that I'm not as involved in. From the market side, there's a risk. You know, we uh, we export you know about 800,000 to a million head of cattle a year to the United States. We export about 75% of our beef. So yeah, if they're talking about any kind of renegotiation, there's certainly a risk concern there. Some of the feedback that I hear kind of secondhand is that you know beef is Canadian beef industry is not a huge target, but we still got to be aware of it. It could be a could be an issue, but right now we're kind of it doesn't sound to be in the line like it's going to be a big market changer here in the short term, anyways. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time yeah, again, right. Brian. Thanks. Thanks for having me.